Hi, my name is Tom Lyons, Senior Engineer with Inflow Communications. And today, what we're going to talk about is some of the remote work options for your PBX, specifically if you are on Shortel 14.2 or Mitel Connect. This will bring you through a few of the options at a high level that you have available to get your workforce set up for remote office use. Depending on the platform that you are currently using, whether it be Shortel 14.2 or Mitel Connect, you do have several options available um, for remote work in your system. Most of them will require some sort of setup, whether it be network setup or um, setting up a device to um, have your users authenticate to, um, in the case of the Edge Gateway, for example, for Connect, which we will be going over. But there are a couple options that work out of the box as well. And these options that we are going to go over today will include using a desk phone at home or a PC headset in conjunction with the client to provide a soft phone setup. A couple things that you need to know before we get started. Um, in order to get a large number of users to get set up in an a environment where they are working remote, there will be um, some resource considerations that you need to, that you will need to plan for. Um, in particular, um, especially if you are going to be using SawPhone in your environment, and this is not something that you typically do um, on the inside world, um, you will need available IP phone resources, ideally at the headquarters site, in order to facilitate the use of the of this application. Now, if you don't have the, ver the IP phone resources available on your current switches in your infrastructure, which I would recommend making sure you have at least one for each remote user that you're going to have available, you can use the virtual phone switches that are available in Shortel 14.2 as well as Mytel Connect to provide this support. Uh, do keep in mind that these are licensed. There are virtual IP phone licenses that are required for these phones. However, you do get a 45 day grace period when um, you set these up for the first time and go over just like any other licensing in the system. So you will have a period where you can use this. Um, in addition, if this is something that you want to have available for future use, we can get that licensing for you as well. Network changes and setup may be required. In specifics, um, the edge gateway, um, which is usable in Mitel Connect, as well as the mobility router, um, which is available in Connect. And also, if you have it already for Shortel.14.2, uh, it is available as well. Um, those are no longer available to get um, on 14.2 for, for new deployments. However, existing employment deployments do work. Um, you will need to set up some um, some network changes to make those work. Um, or in the case of the Edge Gateway, there will be additional external IPs that will be required, which we will be going over. Um, or in the case of potentially something like a software VPN, which we'll, we will be talking about as well. And one thing you also want to keep note of is because you are work, working in a remote environment now and everybody is working from home or from a location that's outside the main office, you are not only going to be limited um, by the bandwidth coming into your office, as people will need to be, be able to connect into your office in order to um, create that communication and be able to use the system, but also the user internet is going to be part of that as well now. So if you do have one or two users that have a internet connection that is a little bit shaky, um, latency may be going up and down or, or lower bandwidth, um, then you could have issues for those users um, specifically just because they aren't able to communicate properly. At a minimum, you're going to want at least 1.5 meg to be able to communicate with the system, but ideally you're going to want much, much more than that because at 1.5 meg, um, your users are probably going to overload that use doing other things which will impact their call quality and ability to communicate easily. We're gonna jump right into the options that you have available in 14.2. They are a little bit more limited than what is available in Mitel Connect. However, you do still have options. The very first one at the top here is external assignment. External assignment is a profile option per user in 14 as well as in Connect that will allow you to send calls to an external device instead of your, de your desk phone. So um, as an example, a lot of people use this for their cell phones um, for external use when they, are in an, when they are going to leave the office. Maybe they're going to go on a trip to another branch or something like that so that people can reach them by dialing their extension or, or calling their direct inward dial number um, when they are on the road. 
There's no license required for this. Um, there is one limitation that you do need to know about, which is that we have found that in certain cases where customers have hundreds and hundreds of external assignment users set up on their switches, that their trunk switches do get overloaded. It is a known bug um, at, at Mitel, um, but there has not been a way to circumvent this at this point. So we, you do want to stay away from setting up hundreds and hundreds of users with external assignment. External assignment does have the uh, has compatibility with work groups as well as hunt group support. If you check the the uh, call user even if forwarding all calls box on the hunt groups, it does not support enterprise contact center. Um, so that's an important piece for this as well. If you have a contact center environment, this is not an option that will work for you for that. The other options um, are short-term mobility, um, which is going to allow you to use an application on your phone to essentially work as an extension in the system. Um, in 14.2, the um, short-term mo mobility router requires licensing that has since been deprecated because of the connect deployments um, as, as Mitel moves to, um, to move the 14.2 deployment to end of life and focuses solely on connect. If you do have an existing deployment though, um, mobility can be used for this purpose as well. Um, it is a licensed operation, so your users will need, you will need use, user licenses for this to work. Um, in addition, there is no group or contact center support. So work groups, hunt groups, and contact center do not work with mobility. So that's an important piece for you as well for your workforce functionality. And then finally, you can set up a software VPN connection that would be able to talk to your short tail infrastructure and that would allow users to connect in, use the client, um, and then use soft phone as well as be able to check their voicemails, use IM if you're using instant messaging in, in the platform, and essentially work the way that um, they did from within the office with the exception of if they were using a desk phone, you would set them up for a soft phone. This will allow your communicator client to function. It will allow the use of soft phone. Um, one, one thing that you do need to note for this is the soft phone does require licensing. It is a per user license. Um, so again, just like the, um, the virtual phone licenses, you do get a 45 day trial for this. Um, but um, after that 45 days, um, it will lock you out of director and you would have to either, per you would have to purchase the licenses in order to move forward. Um, your system will not go down once you hit that 45 day grace period. That's something that's important to note, but you will not be able to make changes anymore until the licenses are acquired. Um, one big bonus for this, especially if you're in a contact center environment is if properly set up so that the VPN can talk to everything, um, the VPN will allow um, support for group calls via the soft phone as well as contact center. So this is an important piece to note here. So next what we're going to do is we're just going to go through a couple of the boxes that you need for external assignment. There are a couple prerequisites um, to setting up external assignment in 14.2 as well as connect. The first one would be in the user groups that you were going to set up for um, for these users. In the telephony class of service, you need to make sure that allow external assignment is enabled. Um, otherwise, these options will not be available to you. Um, the other the other piece to this is the setup that you will see here, um, which is on my screen now. You'll see that I'm on an on a user and I'm currently on the personal options tab for the user. And highlighted below it is a little hyperlink for external assignment and additional phones. This is going to take you to the configuration screen for this. So if I go ahead and go to the next page, on personal options, you will see a an option specifically for external assignment. And you'll see um, that I have the box checked. I have a phone number in there, and then there's an activation dropdown, which is currently set to accept call by pressing one. The external assignment box, in conjunction with the phone number that you place in, will then essentially assign any calls um, that are coming into um, that extension to go to the number in question. For the users, um, they would see their desk phone uh, go from having their name on it to showing a uh, to showing anonymous, which is expected as a part of this operation. Um, and then the activation is going to be how the call is answered. And this is actually quite important for external assignment users. So you have two options with the activation. You have the ability to accept the call by answering, and you have the ability to accept the call by pressing one. 
Um, the difference between the two is whether or not you're going to allow an external voicemail or similar um, be able to pick up the call. If I'm set to accept by answering and my cell phone voicemail picks up the call, then that cell phone voicemail is actually going to connect the call and get that voicemail. So that's where the voicemail would be, which may not be expected for your users. By setting it to press one to accept, when you pick up the phone, you will hear a little system prompt that asks you to press one to accept the incoming call. Um, this, this stops the cell phone voicemail or any other external device voicemail, like if you're using a landline with an answering machine or something like that, from picking up the call. Um, which will allow the short tail voicemail to um, answer as normal if you aren't able to pick up the call. This is a good way to use the system so that you are able to um, keep everything, all the continuity going for, for your environment. For mobility, um, this is going to cover the actual user setup as well as the options that you need to set up in the um, in the, the user as well as the mobility router itself. What it doesn't cover for this is the actual configuration of the, of the hardware router. We may have a how-to guide coming out for that in the near future. But in mobility, um, first on the user profile, this will be on the general tab, um, you will need to go to the mobility options and you will need to click on allow mobility access as well as allow enhanced mobility with extensions with extension. It will actually give you an extension when you check that box. What this does in 14.2 is this actually sets a ghost extension up, which you'll see down below. And this is used for the setup of the user inside the mobility router. So you can see here, I had a, a user named Fax Leasing that I used for this setup. When I created this, this setup and I checked those boxes and hit save, the um, ghost extension created was fax underscore leasing underscore 2337. And you'll see over on the right side, the extension for this is 7572. So this is something that you will need for later when you set up the user in the mobility router. Once you're in the mobility router, if you have any users that are already set up, and if you are on 14 with an existing mobility router set up, you likely do, um, then I would recommend copying the user because that's gonna copy a lot of the profile settings that are going to be required in order to make the user work. Um, on that general page, your, your username is gonna be the client username that you're going to use in um, the short tail director. So for the user, you would use their client username. There will also be a line tab that you will go into. And on that line tab are the um, settings that you are going to want to set up for the user here. And going through these, you will have an extension, which is gonna be the user extension. So the original extension, not the ghost extension you created. The enterprise full number will be the DID of the user. So if they have a direct inward dial, this would be the number for that as well. And then on the PBX side security settings, you wanna make sure that you're set to digest. This tells the mobility router to actually interface with the short tail system to give them, um, to give them their authentication. And then you've got two options there for a user ID and the password. The user ID is going to be that ghost extension we created. So that fax underscore leasing underscore 2337 that I created by, by uh, checking those mobility boxes in director is going to be my user ID. My password is going to be my SIP password. Now the SIP password is located all the way at the bottom of the general tab for the user. By default, there is nothing assigned to that password. So we recommend setting something that is very easy to remember, like change me or one, two, three, four, five, six. That's gonna make your life a lot easier um, to get set up into the system. And so with all of that combined, you'll be able to get a mobility user set up. For your software VPNs, we aren't gonna go into, that, into specifics on that, but we do have a maintenance port guide that we can provide for you. Um, as a general rule, you wanna make sure that um, you can talk to every device in the short tail infrastructure. So if you have multiple sites, the VPN needs to be able to talk to all of those sites um, in, order, in order to have full connectivity. Um, and you will also need to make sure that um, your ports are open in accordance with the maintenance guide. Um, so there are several that are used in, sp in particular for soft phone. Each one of those are going to need to be set up. And we can provide that port list for you if you do want to go down the software VPN route. For Connect, 
the options are much the same, but there's a few, a few key differences here. Um, for external assignment, it works exactly the same as 14.2. It allows calls to reach an external device instead of a desk phone. It works for work groups. It does work for hunt groups if you have the call, the call forwarding enabled for users that are forwarding all calls. Um, but it does not have contact center support just like before. Mobility is much the same as well. It does not have support for groups or ECC. Licensing is required for your users um, and does allow the um, cell phone to use the Mitel Connect application in order to connect to the mobility router and essentially work as a basic extension in the system. You can see people, see presence, see your voicemail. You can see all that from the phone. And then finally, and this was a big improvement in Connect versus 14.2, is the Edge Gateway de um, deployment. The Edge Gateway is a virtual device that will allow you to set up desk phones, um, soft phones, and even contact center um, through the VPN appliance that we set up. Now, this does require licensing for any remote phones. There's a there's a one for one remote phone um, license that is required for this, as well as a checkbox on the user that um, you will have to check on the telephony tab that will um, that will um, allow for remote phone authentication, which will allow the user to actually assign themselves. Um, and soft phone also requires a license one for one. So those those pieces are important to note. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through what you can do to set up external assignment in Connect. So this is, again, a very high level view. And you'll notice that I'm on an extension here. Um, I am also on the routing tab of that extension. And then finally, on the sub tab, I am in phones. This is where you can set up additional phones that the system can use for users. So you'll see here that I have one labeled cell phone with a phone number in. And then I have the activation set to accept call by pressing one. And then I also have a number of rings, which, which is um, going to um, correspond to the number of rings that would be in your call handling modes in 14.2. And let's talk about that for a second, because that's an important piece for external assignment as well. External assignment um, will generally take a minimum of two rings for the system to take an inbound call, process that, send the call outbound, and then for that call to reach your external device. So as a result, we recommend sending your number of rings either in your call handling options in 14.2 or here on the number of rings to at least six to give you time to answer that call. Otherwise, this works the exact same as 14.2. Um, this will allow you to send those calls to the destination phone number, um, whether it's a cell phone, a, uh, another landline, whatever you, whatever you need there. And the activation works the same way as well. Um, definitely set to accept by pressing one um, if you want the system to handle your voicemail, as well as if you're a member of any groups, because if the cell phone voicemail picks up and you're set to accept by answer, then the work group or hunt group will assume that the call is answered as well. So you want to make sure you are set to accept call by pressing one. Once you have the phone set up here, what all you have to do is move over to the routing tab here and then change in the drop down from desk phone to the label that you created for the for the external device for the incoming calls ring that will change you to the device that you need um, in order to receive those calls so you do have that functionality here as well um, and the same the same rules do apply for this um, as it does for 14 your user group does have to have external assignment enabled in the telephony class of service in order for external assignment to be able to be available for your users. Now let's talk real quickly about Connect Mobility as well. So for Connect Mobility, um, there is a checkbox here as well on the telephony tab. Um, you will see that I have it highlighted here, en enable enhanced mobility with extension. That does create an extension, but it doesn't create the same ghost extension that you see in 14.2. So the process is a little bit different. Um, you will see on the screenshot as well the other two checkboxes that would be required for remote operation, the enable use of soft phone, if you want to use soft phone um, through the client, um, and also that enable remote phone authentication, which is specifically for desk phones through the edge gateway, which we will be talking about as well. Um, so what you would do for mobility is you would click on this enable enhanced mobility with extension box, make sure that you get an extension there, save, save the user. And make a note of the user's client username. Um, make sure to change that SIP password to something easy. Um, and 
then you would go ahead and go to the mobility router. On the mobility router itself, again, if you have users that are already working, copy them, because it's, it's going to save some of the settings that are going to be required for this. Your user ID is gonna be the client username of the user. I would check the local, the local user box and put in an easy password. In fact, I would duplicate the same password that you were using for the SIP password, because it'll make your life easier. And then through there, you would then um, go to the line tab, make sure your extension is the user extension, the original extension. Um, the enterprise full number would be the DID of the user. And then for the PBX side security, you want to set that to digest. The user ID in this case is actually going to be the client username. And the password is going to be the SID password. And now finally, we are going to talk about the Edge Gateway. And there will be a how-to guide on how to get this, uh, this uh, device set up um, coming out in the near future as well. But this is going to be a high-level overview of what you will need and how it will work. So the Edge Gateway is essentially a hardware VPN that will allow you to connect in and use the Connect Client, the soft phone. You can actually set up remote, remote desk phones for this as well, um, provided that you have um, the um, correct phone, such as an IP480G. Um, and we'll also, um, if you have it in your environment, we can help you, we can help you set up um, contact center functionality as well. So there's a couple, there's a couple different things that you'll need for this. Um, there are three different services that are mandatory um, for the Edge Gateway. Each one of them requires their own external IP address. So this will, uh, this will allow the system actually communicate effectively. For those external IP addresses, you will need to make a DNS record externally for each one of those. Um, and we, we recommend setting them after the names of the service to make them easy. And then finally, you'll want to set up NAT translation for those external IPs to internal IPs, preferably in a DMZ location, um, that can then communicate to the router. So those three services are the RAST service, which provides phone support for desk phones. It will require a pool of IPs which preferably would be in the voice VLAN, and those, those IPs must be excluded from DHCP. Um, if the IP pool is not in the voice VLAN, it just simply needs to be an IP pool that um, can communicate with everything in the short hill infrastructure. You also have a turn service, which, prefer, which will um, allow for stun routing for devices if needed. And then finally, the reverse proxy, which is going to provide client communication and also allow you to use the soft phone. Finally, if you do have contact center, a fourth external IP and DNS record can be used for the contact center, which will allow your agents to log into the interaction center and use this um, just like they were in the office. So externally on each one of these IPs, you need to make sure that port 443, both TCP and UDP are enabled for transmission. This is what the VPN appliance uses from the outside world in order to communicate in. The other piece here is on the internal side, you wanna make sure that all the ports are open between the internal interface of the edge gateway and the um, rest of the Schwartel gear. In, in this case, the easiest method would be to make sure the internal interface for the device is actually in the same subnet um, as the rest of the voice equipment at headquarters. Finally, we will need to know the internal DNS server that you have available um, so that we can set this up for proper operation because DNS will be required to translate once, um, once everything gets into the system. For your phone users, you will need to change your phones so that they can access the VPN. Um, we will put out a guide for this as well, but the high level for this is with the handset down, you would press mute, then type in 73887 pound or setup pound. And that's gonna bring you to a setup page. And then in the IP protocol options, there will be a spot for VPN. And you would wanna change that VPN to the, to the uh, same FQDN or DNS record we're using for the RAST service or the phone service. So as an example, if I was setting up an edge gateway for info communications and I was setting up um, the RAST service, I might use rast.infocom.com and I would point my phone there. The phone will reboot to apply settings and then it will attempt to connect, um, at which point you should get prompted to enter an extension and password. For soft phones, and again, this is high level, 
Um, once the edge gateway is set up, you would set your server to the FQDN used for reverse proxy. In this particular case, um, for my screenshot, we are using egw.inflowcom.com as the example. So you'll see that in the server tab. Um, and you find that server tab by clicking on show advanced. And for this actual um, login, it is just the same as if, if your users were logging into the connect client from, uh, from the office itself. They would still use their same client username. They would still use their same client password. And finally, for ECC, if you, if you do have this set up in your environment, um, the users would browse to the FQDN that's used for contact center. So in this case, maybe it's contactcenter.inflowcom.com as an example. And then they would log in as normal through the interaction center, just like they would if they were in the office. Now for this operation, because the interaction center does not provide its own call functionality or phone, you will need to provide those users with either that soft phone through the edge gateway or set up a desk phone for them. And that concludes our high level um, how to. This will give you some ideas of, of what is capable as well as how to set up the, these functions for your users. We will have in-depth guides on mobility user setup as well as um, the edge gateway deployment um, and edge gateway edge gateway um, FAQs as well. So those will be coming. If you do need any more information from us off the bat, um, you can connect with us at our current customer resources here. You can email us at support at inflowcommunications.com. Um, I would recommend though, if you have anything that is pressing um, or you need assistance with setting up these remote users, give us a call at 855-946-3569 or 855-9-INFLOW. This will allow us to get to you quicker and provide the assistance that you require. Be on the lookout for more guides. They will be coming through here um, very shortly as well. Thank you mu very much for taking the time to watch this video today, and we will be in touch with you shortly. Thank you very much. Bye.